undocumented cashola just helps keep this gig going that much longer. Okay, well, I need that money back and Tariq's trust fund too. That's not how this works. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. The one thing Tariq St. Patrick has been working towards since the beginning of Power Book 2 Ghost is his father's trust, and no more so than in Season 3, where he now finds himself on his own. But not only is he working to inherit his father's trust, he's working to get back to Tasha, Yasmin, and Grandma Estelle, with something they can use to create and have a better life with. Ironically, that's all Ghost wanted to do for them from Episode 1 of Power. So in this video, we're going to be running through the history of what Ghost built, the confusion around Tariq's trust fund, and whether it's just a QCP building at Western Holdings or his entire trust. But either way, Brayden's fucked up because Kane has also invested the Tahada's money into Western Holdings. So I will be running through the Ponzi scheme in extreme detail with a few scenes we haven't seen yet. So stick with the video till the end because there are various clues and easter eggs that I'm going to run through to tell the whole story. Throughout power we saw Ghost build an empire where it was said he was losing $25,000 an hour by taking his men off the streets. Now if you do the maths, the sums are astronomical which is why he needed more than just a laundromat to clean their cash. So we saw how Ghost bought Club Truth, fulfilling a dream that his father would have been proud of, and another place where he could clean 10 times what they could at the laundromats. He then expanded when he went head to head with Simon Stern, someone who I am going to touch on later on. Now even though Ghost had his money issues towards the end of power when he was being pressured by Jason Mitchich and everything else that was going on, Ghost still had his empire, most notably the clubs, most of which Tariq can't inherit until he graduates from Stansfield with an average GPA of 3.5. Ghost also helped Kay Egan, Paz Valdez, and Tommy Egan. Unfortunately, he left nothing for Tasha. Now, Daniel was the man who was looking after Ghost's estate, and that continued in Ghost Seasons 1 and 2. So fast forward to Power Book 2 Ghost, we saw further moves from Ghost from beyond his grave. He had Daniel deliver a few messages to Tariq St. Patrick. So at that moment in time, Daniel was still in control over Tariq's trust. Ghost made it sure that Daniel kept an eye on how he was doing at college, made sure that Yasmin was adopted if nobody was there for her, and also sent Tariq a letter which he burned. But is Tariq's trust also about to go up in flames? This all actually started with a move from Braden Weston early in Season 3. Tariq had to pick up an internship which he did with Rashad Tate, but Braden had other ideas. He wanted to bring Tariq in at Western Holdings for two reasons. One, Tariq was his best friend and he loved working with Tariq, but more importantly, he wanted to push way through Western Holdings, and he wanted to open Tariq's eyes up to the market in Wall Street, something which was very strategically done by Brayden. But this was a move that was done behind Tariq's back, and when Tariq finds out, I don't think he's going to be too happy, especially because now that his trust seems to be in jeopardy. Course correct was genius. If I was still at Stansfield, something I would have thought of. So the clues were always there Western Holdings wasn't as it seems, because Lucas Weston couldn't be any more opposite to his brother Robert Weston. Now RSJ said it best in episode 5, Two Faces, everybody has two faces, and Lucas Weston's was a Ponzi scheme that he's running through Western Holdings. The other clue was the private flaws that Kiki mentioned in episode 2, and that was something they were always going to circle back to. Now this is where it starts to get interesting, while Braden was trying to get Crashcoin servers back up, he noticed someone coming out the closet with bags of shredded paper. But just before we get to Braden uncovering the truth, Braden was on the phone to Semyon. Now I did a quick google search so you guys don't have to. The name Semyon is of Hebrew origin, which is normally used in Russian speaking countries. Semyon is a Russian name, a form of Simon or Simeon, which means God is heard or the listener. Now I don't know if it's a pure coincidence or have they named this particular character Semyon for a reason, and if they have, what's he listening to? So just thought I'd share that clue, so let me know your thoughts in the comment section, but back to business. As Brayden finds his secret staircase, I don't think he was ready for what he was about to uncover. One of the secret flaws that Kiki mentioned in episode 2, where they were shredding documents and where Lucas Weston, Kiki and few of his workers run their Ponzi scheme. He came across two sets of books where the numbers just didn't add up, so he took the books to try and make sense of it, but when he couldn't, he went to Kiki. What about the hidden staircase with the fucking secret shredding room? I mean, isn't that how the whole Madoff thing was set up? So this was in reference to Bernard Lawrence Madoff, who is the mastermind of the largest Ponzi scheme in history, worth around 64.8 billion. And you can actually find a documentary on Netflix, and it's titled Madoff, The Monster of Wall Street. Now considering he wasn't getting anywhere with Kiki, he went straight to Lucas, who did admit that he is indeed running a Ponzi scheme, but Robert Weston knows nothing. In fact, only Kiki and a handful of chosen employees are involved. The way they keep it hidden is by bringing in new investors to keep their accounts flush. For example, RSJ, who I'm going to come to in just a moment. Now, when Braden called Lucas a criminal, he had to laugh because he's known from day one that him and Tariq St. Patrick have been selling drugs through Western Holdings and how they've been using Crashcoin to clean their cash. Now, while we're on the topic of Crashcoin, 
I really wouldn't be surprised if Lucas ends up taking this as well, which really would leave Brayden in even more deeper shit than he already is. Now just a side note, Tariq did mention to RSJ that he convinced the executor of his trust to have the Queen's Child project building moved because it did lack structural integrity and that's how he was able to sell the building to RSJ at a higher price, a pot that would be waiting for him at Western Holdings once he graduates. So I'm not sure if this was an actual a writing error and whether Tariq's entire trust has been moved to Western Holdings, but that's what it seems. Raiden said he wants Tariq's trust back. I need that money back and Tariq's trust fund too. That's not how this works. So I do think we're just gonna have to wait for actual confirmation, but it does seem like Tariq convinced Daniel to move his trust to Western Holdings, which I do have to say is a bit of a disrespectful move to Ghost if Tariq does lose his trust, but I really wouldn't be surprised if Ghost had another move up his sleeve, because keep thinking you're smarter than Ghost, never make that mistake again. Now let's not also forget, along with Tariq's trust he also has the money that Kane gave him, which I believe is around 2 million, and also Lorenzo's life insurance policy which he wants back, but unfortunately Lucas said that's not how it works and he blackmailed Brayden. He said that Brayden's gonna keep his mouth shut because the prison that he finds himself under Lucas is a nicer prison than where he could end up. Now there are a few side plots that we do need to consider that involves Rashad Tate, RSJ and Simon Stern. This could completely derail Tate's political campaign considering the Westons have been added to Tate's list of donors thanks to Braden Weston because I wouldn't imagine it looks good that he's been funded by not only an illegal drug operation but a Ponzi scheme on Wall Street. Now with RSJ, I don't think it would hurt him as much as it would do with Tate, the Tahadas or Tariq St. Patrick but it would hurt him in the sense he's a man who seems like he sticks by values and principles and being conned by Lucas Weston definitely won't go down well. Nobody likes being cheated out of their money whether it be in the drug game or whether it be in the boardroom so I think we're about to see a different side to RSJ. He made reference to James St. Patrick having two faces but I think we could end up seeing RSJs after he finds out. I don't take orders from you. Detective. Everyone takes orders from me. We also have to talk about Simon Stern. If it does turn out to be true that Tariq's entire trust has moved to Western Holdings, then I wouldn't imagine Simon Stern would be happy either because he benefits from Tariq inheriting his trust because he gets club truth. So I guess you could say, Tariq St. Patrick could have two very wealthy people in his corner still, RSJ and Simon Stern. Now let's talk about the consequences for the Westerns. What are you gonna do for this family? I don't wanna end up like you. So this was one of the teasers that was released before Go Season 3, where Tariq says what are you gonna do for this family and Tariq looks pissed. He's also not in any suit attire, so who knows, he might have been done with working with the Westerns at this moment in time. But Tariq's asking or rather telling Brayden what are you gonna do for this family, meaning his street fam. At some point, we're also gonna see Kane with a gun to Brayden, but this could be two things. Kane knows that Westerns are fucked up with his money, or he's found out Lauren is alive, or potentially even both, but regardless, Brayden will be left with no choice. Tariq is asking what is he gonna do for their family, and Kane will definitely come and collect that body that Brayden owes him. So could Brayden's first body either be Lucas Weston or Kiki Travis, or potentially even both? I do think that something's gonna have to give and Brayden and the entire Western family as well as Western Holdings could genuinely be burned down to the ground and we haven't even touched on law enforcement connecting the dots. Law enforcement know that Tariq St. Patrick and Brayden Weston are selling out our Western Holdings and that's gonna put even more eyes on them and potentially even their books. So a lot to consider with Tariq's trust to RSJ, Simon Stern and how Brayden may have to catch his first body or two. So drop all your thoughts down below on this Ponzi scheme and as always, Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.